Good morning everyone and welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream where we share with you some of the greatest model railway locomotives out there and give you some of the history and details behind them as well. Do put any questions you have regarding today's locomotive in the chat and we'll cover them throughout the stream as well. Now today we're looking at one of the brand new releases of 2020. We're looking at Hornby's all new double O gauge GWR Large Prairie. There's four different variations of this that have already been made and are available right now, with more no doubt to come in the future as well. But for those of you who aren't so familiar with the GWR Large Prairie, it is one of the most iconic locomotives used on the GWR and the Western region of British Railways right through until the 1960s. But the history goes back a little further. The first one was built in 1903 as a prototype and developed into the 3100 class of which 40 were built. These particular locomotives were a 1920s design, really developed after 20 years of extensive use of the 3100s. So in 1929, the 5101 class was made, which are some of the locomotives you see here. And the 6100 class, which was built a little bit later on in 1931, were the really powerful versions with an upgraded boiler in there too. A little bit more heavier, but really did pack a punch. We have some of the 61s and the 51 XXs right here for you. Now, these were mainly used on suburban services across the Great Western Railway and the Western region as well. With the small wheelbase, they had great acceleration and could handle the medium-sized trains running out of London and Birmingham as well. And indeed, when the 61XX locomotives were built in 1931, they replaced every single other type of suburban tank engine running out of London, apart from the locomotives that were fitted with the auto train gear, which for the push-pull services, you had the little 14XXs and other types. Every single other type of steam locomotive used on the suburban services out of London from the 1930s onwards was replaced by one of these standardised designs, which just goes to show you how successful they were. They had 20 years experience with the 3100s to really refine the design into either the 5101 or the 61XX as, as well. And you could see these all over the Great Western region. You could see them right down into the southwest of England. You could see them operating out of London and Birmingham, as we've just covered, all points in between as well, into Wales, North and South Wales too. And right up to the, even to the GWR sort of little known reaches up into Northwest England, up into the Wirral and parts of Cheshire as well. So wherever you were on the network, you could see quite a few of these particular locomotives. There were 70 of the 61 XXs built, the suburban tank engine versions, and there was quite a few more. I don't have the exact number, but I believe it was about 150 of the 51 or one classes. And some of the earlier locomotives were upgraded to be standard with these as well. As you can see here, they go right through the livery spectrum of the Great Western Railway from the 30s into BR as well. And we start with the original Great Western liveried locomotive there. We go through to the wartime GWR lettering used from the mid 40s right up until the late 1940s. We go to the BR with the early crest, which completely replaced the green in the early 1950s. But don't worry, green fans, the green did make a comeback in the mid 1950s and that lasted through to the locomotive's final withdrawal in 1965 which is the complete end of great western steam that is there was no more after that unfortunately and it just shows how reliable and useful a design these locomotives were that they made it right to the end so as you can guess already a real icon of Great Western Steam, didn't always haul the main expresses, didn't always haul a lot of the fantastic duties, but they really were there performing reliable duties day in, day out, seen by many of London's commuters and various other cities as well. But anyway, enough about the history, let's take a closer look at the model. And as we mentioned, this is a fully new tooled version from Hornby. This was made available. I'll just turn the rotating table on there so we can see a spin. 
This has been completely tooled from the ground up by Hornby. And this was first made available in the middle of 2020. It's a completely new model. You can see there it's got full NEM sockets on the front for your NEM couplings. It's got full valve gear detail there as well. Handrails separately fitted. Well, separately fitted pretty much everything, really. Lamp brackets, a full cab interior as well. It's got a powerful five-pole motor in there, which is located just above the rear two driving wheels. You've got the full cab interior. You can also just make out there, you've got the handbrake on the left and the regulator on the right there too. This particular model is the late 1950s variation covering that BR green with the late crest. And you can see that's fully applied in the Brunswick green there with the orange and black lining. You've also got the printed number plates on there. You have the root classification circle underneath the number plate fully detailed and coloured cab interior. You've got a bit of die cast weight in the chassis too on these models, so they do have a great haulage capacity in there. You've got pickups on every single wheel and you've got articulated front and rear pony wheels too. As always, these are exactly how I've got them out of the box and put them into our studio. So every detail you see on the model at the moment is pre-fitted but I will give you a closer look at the detail pack now. There are some optional extras, so do, should you wish to put them on. You have an NEM coupling ready for the front of the locomotive. You have the brake gear there as well, the brake rigging for underneath, if you want to fit that. And you have separate steam heat pipes and cylinder drain taps as well there, which you can fit now. The locomotive will run down to second radius curves. You can get it around some particularly tight curves on your layout, but you won't be able to fit some of those fittings if you do have the tight curves. All the details on what you can and can't fit, dependent on your layout, are, as always, included in a full instruction manual, which has all the details, not only on how to fit the extra details, but also how to fit your locomotive with digital or digital sound. The loco's got space not only for an eight pin decoder, but also a 27 millimeter round speaker as well. So if you really like that characteristic Great Western bark, it is something you can put in your loco should you wish. But all four of these are available right now as well. They are still a pretty fresh release, so they've not been out too long, but they are still available to get. All versions come in at £126 for your standard version, which I will put back on the screen for you now. So even this particular livery in the BR green there and the two great Western greens and the BR black that I had on the screen before, all of these start at £126. You can buy them already pre-fitted with an 8-pin decoder for £144 as well. So if you are a digital user, you can either check these out analog or fully digital ready also but just taking a focus at some of the separately fitted details there you can see that it's got the separately fitted smoke box dart you've got the lamp brackets there as well the vacuum brake pipe and the horn guides underneath the NEM couplings too you've got fully working outside valve gear heading to those really large cylinders and that for me is something that sets off Great Western locomotives where you've got those still in those that really stick out from the body sides if we get a straight on shot there you'll see just how much they come out from the frames there as well and that actually prevented these locomotives running on quite a few different lines as many has survived into preservation and have spread the wings a little bit outside the western region you'll see them up on the um, north yorkshire moors railway i believe they've got a couple up there and many visit other lines in the north and southeast of England too. So not quite the usual territory for the prairie, but if you are a preservation or a modern era modeler, there's a great chance to get one of these. In fact, number 4160, which we do have on our table today, is one of the preserved locomotives at the West Somerset Railway as well, in quite unsurprisingly, in Somerset. So that is one if you have a preserved railway layout it is one to take a bit of a look at 
So we've got four different liveries and some great ideas for formations for these two. As you can expect, the main duties were passenger working. So I've put a pair of Hornby's Mark 1s here in the appropriate crimson and cream livery with our BR black version, but mainly do what have hauled suburban rates and coaches. So you're looking at examples such as Hornby's B set or Hornby's call it suburban coaches that have just come through. You've got the Mark 1 as well, if you're modelling into the BR era, but also the Mark 1 Suburban Coach as well, which is also available. So you've got a really great variety there of passenger stock that you may already have if you're a great Western modeler to pair one of these locomotives with. You do occasionally see photos of them working on freight duties as well, especially the 5101 locomotives, which were a little bit more of a mixed traffic design. So again, if you're a great Western modeler and you've already got your towed brake van, your plank wagon, pretty much anything else from the 1930s to the 1960s, there's a great chance that a prairie would have ran on that as well. So some really great opportunities to get one of these onto your layout. And you can click that link in the description should you want a little bit more information on what models we currently have available as well. So you've got the fully metal connecting rods there as well and driving wheels. It's really easy to remove the body on these as well, should you wish to fit a little bit of extra detail in the cab or if you want to digital or sound fit your own model as well. It is just a couple of screws underneath the locomotive and then the chassis lifts away. Again, there are full instructions on how to do that within the instruction manual but it's one of the easiest locomotives to fit. Hornby have really made this so it's very user friendly as well. So you can get inside it pretty easily. It's really easy to maintain as well. You shouldn't need to oil it too often, but as always, a, a bit of a running in period is recommended with this model as it is with, with any locomotive we sell. So we've covered where he worked. We've covered the suitable areas. We've also covered a lot of the rolling stock that ran with them as well. We've looked at how much they are with them starting at 126 and then 144 for the digital versions. There's no light pre-fitted to these, but it is something you can fit yourself if you did want to put an appropriate headlamp on there too. We've got a mix of die cast and metal die cast and plastic in the chassis so you've got weight in there to pack a punch but it's not too heavy a model it comes in at just under around 200 grams so while it has enough in there to help with the haulage capacity it's not going to be putting a, a bow in the middle of your baseboards either it's not going to cause any issues in that regard but this is a model i think personally that's been long overdue with them appearing pretty much everywhere on the great western railway network for over 30 years and the models, the locomotives before that, shall we say, going right back to the predecessors, the 3100s being there right back until 1903. It is one of the success stories of the Great Western Railway. It's one of the designs that was used all over the network for nearly 60 years with some modifications. Hornby's model has really brought that into the 21st century as well with an exquisitely detailed model. They've provided a lot of the different tooling differences as well to produce some of the variation differences between the 5101s and the 61XXs, and also some of the variations in their lifetimes as well. So the fitting of the BR smoke box number plate on the front of number 4160 here being an example of that. So these four are the initial models that are available. These are the first releases of this completely brand new tooling from the, from the baseboard up, essentially. You can get these right now if you click that link in the description for more information. And no doubt there's more different variations of these to come in the future in alternative liveries and running numbers as well. So I don't know about you, but I'm certainly looking forward to seeing those come through. But in the meantime, Hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about one of the Great Western's largest tank engines that it had to offer and one of the most successful too. Hope you found out a little bit more about this brand new model that's come into stock with us this year and inspired you to take a bit of a closer look. Do click that link in the description. We've got all the information on how to order one of these locomotives right now. 
We've got some really high res images on there too that you can take a real closer look at should you wish and spot some of the differences that Hornby have catered for within these four models and the tooling. But all it remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page as well for more live streams like this and all of the latest model railway news as well. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.